Okay, any points from last discussion? Anybody remembers? And, yes. Okay, yeah, but that's a continuous subject throughout this chapter and even previous chapter. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appearing to teach us not how to enjoy, well, how to enjoy, yes, on the spiritual level. <laughs> He's teaching us how to become an a devotee. Yes, how we should act as a devotees. Okay, yeah, we mentioned King Kaur Shekhar, we mentioned Ravina Das Goswami. Okay. Okay, we mentioned different essences of uh, this philosophy. If you know this, you can we can understand the whole philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Bandha Bidayan Prayojan. 
one, one. Let's just remind others. Okay, I mean, what did we say last? Some bundle. What does that mean? Relationship, but it, it may also mean a field, field of action. But that means some basics, some foundation, some some, some essence there. Some bundle. Abidea. What did we mention about that? What is what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> Abidea means process, means acting. What do we do to achieve what? Prayojana. What means prayojana? Goal. If you know these three things, you know the whole philosophy. And the whole philosophy can be summarized into these three different levels or three different principles. That's it. That's it. So everything. What is goal? What do we do to? to do and then what is our position because it's like okay simple no what's your goal where you want to go huh destination oh where are you church gate church gate <laughs> why you want to church oh and then that's too far that's that's too, <laughs> too expensive <laughs> still we have to work for a lot where do you want to go somewhere <laughs> London, okay, okay, let's uh, go to London. Now it's summer, the devotees will have a lot of high nouns and things. Okay, you want to go to London. So then, where are you? You're in Mumbai, so that's your Sambanda. And who are you? You're someone who can afford the ticket. <laughs> so then you have to have you want to go to, you know what's your priority that's your that's london so now what you have to do you have to you have to go to the airport online whatever distance there your traveling is your habit there that's also how to reach the process of reaching that's also then anything can happen on the way no it can happen within the plane or outside or whatever, anything may happen. So Abhidea is very important. You have to make sure that you reach your destination. It's not easy. Abhidea is very, you know, you have to be really conscious, cautious, careful, and make sure that you're traveling safely as much as you can from your side. And then you're choosing proper means to travel. So it's a process, process. The whole sadhana, the whole idea of Chanting, serving, associating, visiting the temple. This is all pro it's all Abhidea. So goal has to, has to be clear. And then specifically more that process is summarized within that. You know this? This process is very easy. At least you have an idea what you're supposed to do, where you're going, what's your position. And that's in everything. That's in everything. That's so it's not just uh, it's it's your relationship with everything in this world and with everyone in this world you can apply this you know what is who are you what's your position how do you act or interact with anyone to achieve certain goal no let's say husband and wife or whatever you know i'm husband or wife whatever and then what are we supposed to do to achieve certain goal of our relationship the more you're clear the better results you get so everything can be summarized within it. Absolutely everything. You, you know the principle. Everything is so clear. So if anybody is asking you, what is your, what are you doing, you Hare Krishna people, listen, to, what is your philosophy? Sambanda? Isn't that the That's incredible. That's it. We understand what's our position, who is God, and then, you know, to reach, how to reach him, what is the process? And that's it. Very simple. That's, that is the contribution of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He presented the whole philosophy and the whole essence of the Vedic literature in such a way so that you know, we can understand in very simple manner. That's the formula, that's the aphorism, that's the essence. That's it. Sambanda De Prayojana. Okay, yes, and then? In 
Okay, we discussed about rules and regulations, and uh, they are helpful, very helpful for everyone, but not so essential as we advance. I mean, in a sense, not so essential, not necessary. If they are constraining our bhakti, then they're not considered so much. That's the point. But if you don't have bhakti, then that, that's ex extremely important. <laughs> okay, street light example. <laughs> yeah, okay. Not street light. It's the traffic light. <laughs> okay, anything else? Everybody silent their ears. Okay, we talked, yes, about this, this essence of rules and, and someone who is confined or feels confined, not feels, but it's, it's bound to be guided by those rules and feels very unsafe beyond the rules. But somebody who is more advanced, he is practicing those rules, but he's not bound by those rules. He's bound by love that he has towards Krishna. So then, if those rules hamper that love towards Krishna, then the rules are not so That's a very high level of bhakti. That's what we said, so we don't have to worry about that now. It's very important to stick to the rules. <laughs> okay. Just not to get confused and uh, not to divert from the path. Sticking to that up there. Okay, anything else anybody wants to add or we read the new verse today, huh? Um, what? Uh, what? Uh, what? Okay, the more one advances, the more humble he is. Just yes, like, because he realizes how Krishna is great. Just like when so naturally you become more humble. Yes, so? Just like when the woman made Okay, we give example of Uddhava also. I mean, Uddhava. He's extremely exalted, advanced personality. But he also felt somewhat uh, uh, inadequate, in, 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 in proficient or whatever, when compared to the gopis. Oh, but again, that's his humility. In his position, he's perfected. But the gopis are so exalted because they're more than 100% sold out to Krishna, without absolutely any reservation. Okay, so let's hear today. Anugrahatanam manusham deham ashritaha vajate tadrisha krida krida ya shrutva tatparo bhavet Translation and purport by his divine witness, Dr. Yantaswami Shri Prabhupada. Wow, it's going to be a long purport. So we'll read translation and go gradually. Krishna manifests his eternal human like form and performs his pastimes to show mercy to the devotees. Having heard such pastimes, one should engage in service to him. Okay, so here we have. Uh, First of all, Krishna manifesting his eternal human-like form. Now you might have heard this, that uh, man is formed on the image of God or something like this, it goes, no? <coughs> As the original form of God, that's the most attractive form of God. Huh? How is it? How is God the most attractive? In what kind of form? Brahma Jyoti form? No. Is that <laughs> then? Two hands playing the flute. Okay. So that it's who? Because there, if you go to South India sometimes, you will find uh, four hands playing the flute. <laughs> it's very interesting. You'll see many pillars. <coughs> and it's also Krishna. 
but it has four hands. So what kind of Krishna is that? Huh? Not anyone ever saw? No one ever went down so? Almost every temple you'll find Krishna with four hands playing flute. <laughs> yes? No, but we'll stick now to Krishna and four. Krishna has four, it's like this. It's not Vishnu, it's Krishna. It's Krishna. But he is manifesting a little bit of that by Kuntamut. So in Mathura and Varaka, that's the Vasudev Krishna. It's not Raja Krishna, it's a different form of Krishna. So there he may manifest either two or four hands. Matura and Varka. Never in Vrindavan. If he does in Vrindavan, then he is uh, Vasudev Krishna. Vasudev Krishna kills all the demons. Raja Krishna never gets involved in that. He assumes that form. So certain activities and are, are, are specific for either Vasudev or Raja Krishna. So, okay, but we try to now conclude what, what is the most beautiful. Yes, it's, it's Krishna's form. It's Krishna, Sham Krishna, Shama Sundar Krishna, three bending, three Banga Lalita. Anyway, playing the flute. Oh, why are you laughing? It's like, it's, a <laughs> it's playing the flute. So why is he so enchanting, so wonderful? Because even Lakshmi, she gets attracted to Krishna. Lakshmi who is so chaste, so dedicated to Lord Narayan, who is the origin of all the Vishnus, and so forth. So how come she is attracted toward Krishna? Because that's what Krishna exhibits, even four qualities more than Narayan does. We discussed that. Okay, who knows what are those quotes? Okay, one second. Here. See, nobody knows. Here. Friendship. Friendship. Okay, you're you're suspended to land of flight. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> one second. Hey, who said that? Sagar, you know what are the consequences of? You know, he took Pasharam before, so that's why he is. You know, okay, please. Okay, so Krishna has four additional qualities. He's playing the flute. Flute is just the most enchanting sound vibration that anyone can be exposed to. We know how we melt when we hear some sounds, right? how it affects our emotions, steers them, whatever, you just... Higher you can jump out of ecstasy, swimming jet, you can, so many things, or you can feel horrible, you know, sound. Sound is so powerful. Krishna plays the flute, there's some... Opis even sometimes. Flute, because flute is always at Krishna's lips. And anyway, so many things. So, so flute is such an amazing uh, instrument. Of course, it's a personality, but it takes form of the flute also for Krishna's pleasure. So that sound, it is described in the scriptures, whatever is animate becomes inanimate, and whatever is inanimate becomes animate. You know, the river freezes, you know, the stone melts, living beings become stunned or whatever. You know, the bird is flying, it just drops down. <laughs> no, it's, no, I'm joking. Just, but something like this. It's like, so... <laughs> but almost like that, yes. Anyway, so there are different descriptions in the Shastras. I found, anyway, various places. We have Bhagavatam, even Bhagavatam states, and other Swami literature. So that sound of the flute is so enchanting, it's so unique that it's impossible to resist. That's like Gopis, you know. We already compared it to mobile, right? You drop everything and just bounce <laughs> and sing. So like when, when you hear the sound of that flute, nothing else is important. Nothing else matters. It's such a powerful sound. But then who produces that sound? 
Krishna is producing itself. And it's, it is described that it feels that it's very personal. Very personal. It's just like Krishna directly calling you. You have that feeling. And you have that, that, that impression, that understanding, that it's like, it's just very amazing. It's just very amazing. And it's, it's irresistible. It's absolutely irresistible. So that's something that Narayan doesn't have. He doesn't have this. And then again, the beauty of Krishna, it's just, it's, that's why we discussed already. Madan Mohan is like, so it's his conqueror of the cube. The cube has become sorry, he fell from the tree. And he was, I'm not going to repeat this. So, so Krishna is so beautiful. He's just so enchanting. He's just so irresistible. Mm. And then we said the pastimes. The pastimes Krishna performs, Lord Narayan doesn't. He's just sitting on the throne and he's just worshipped. And, you know, there's some things, whatever. But the pastimes Krishna performs, they're so enchanting. They're so attractive. You know, which pastime you will want to participate in? In like some royal ceremony this and that okay maybe maybe but krishna is so much more fun with krishna you can jump over the hills and do so many things and you know, <laughs> steal butter and i don't know chase the monkeys or something i don't know whatever. <laughs> so many pastimes are given and uh, and the last thing the devotees of the lord it's Krishna, Krishna is such an incredible, like Madhuri Yashoda, Nanda Baba, so many devotees. If you tell them about Nara, like, uh, Nanda Maharaj, he worships Lord Narayan, but he's more attached to Krishna. So without Krishna, he wouldn't be interested. In, I mean, he, how would he, I mean, how would he express his fatherly love towards Lord Narayan? How would that, it's, it's impossible. I mean, if it, it, it can become possible, but then that Lord Narayan would melt into Krishna, Krishna would reciprocate like this. So nothing else would satisfy that, that parental love, nothing else can satisfy that conjugal love, nothing else could satisfy that uh, love of friendship. That's, that's what Krishna is. So that's why this form is the most wonderful form, the most fulfilling, the most encompassing, the most potent Krishna potence is there. No. The most attractive. That's what Krishna means, no? Krishna. Na means Ananda. Krish to uh, like Sankar, Shankar Shakti to pull, to attract. So there's no one like Krishna. So that's why Krishna is the most uh, most amazing, most wonderful form. That's why I said he eternal human like form. It's eternal. Of course, we know it's eternal. Sachit and Ananda. It's eternal, full of knowledge, cognizance, and Ananda bliss. You know, like everybody is, but Krishna is in its full fulfillment. So, of course, any other form of the Lord can exhibit all these other qualities, but then they become Krishna. That's interesting. So, depending on what and how many qualities they exhibit, they assume different forms. So, they can assume so many different forms. But a human-like form, it's like this, as Krishna, of course, it's considered the most, the most, what I assume, or let's say, let's put it this way, Bhagavan or God, whatever, what other forms he can assume? What, what, what do you think? What other forms he can assume? Never heard of any other form? Where is your hand? You all did. Did I suspend you or what? I did. <laughs> huh? Nersimha. Okay, so what kind of form is that? What they call this amor, 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 amorph, amor, morphic. No, how, what's that expression? Amorphism, yes. You have a combination of man or so he's half man half lion huh? so if he can be half man half lion then what else he can do? what kind what kind of other form he can take to? yes 
Fish. Why fish? Okay, fish also. <laughs> <laughs> Matsya. No, never heard of Matsya avatar. That's an amazing, that's amazing fish. But aha. Uh -huh. Now this is time to remember all these different avatars. <laughs> yeah, why not? Ah, uh, what, what else? What's some, did you hear of something very... Kurma. Kurma also, okay. Where is anyone ever been to any Kurma temple? Do you know where is the only Kurma temple in the world? Huh? You have been? Why are you raising your hand? <laughs> you were very close. <laughs> okay, there's also one uh, only... There is only Matsya temple in the world. If you want to go for next yatra, no, you tell these people who are <laughs> we cannot organize the yatra. You know? Anyway, then I'll I'll do it. Then I'll I'll you know I'll take you there center. Let's see. It's both in Andhra Pradesh. Kurma is in north, Matsya is down south. Only one and then in between there is Mohini Murti, only one temple in the world. Anyway. Kurma Kshetra is Kurma Kshetra and Matsya Kshetra and Mohini Kshetra. <laughs> Other temples, there are so many avatars, they have so many. Huh? Which one? Yeah, Kurma it's uh, tortoise. It's just, uh, just, just on the border. Now it's it's up north. <laughs> Actually, the whole point is Krishna's forms. There is nothing. Krishna has, he's the prototype of all the forms that you can imagine in this universe. Because everything originates from him. So he can assume, not he can assume, he, he possesses all the forms. That's the whole point. Let's say, how many species of life we hear? You must have already heard. 84. Chorasi, Yoni, So that's so that many at least Krishna can assume also. He's the origin of all, whatever. And if you like cats, Krishna is the original cat. <laughs> if you like whatever, Krishna is the original form. So every it, it, he possesses all those. He is all those as a prototype, and everything else is just manifestation of, of all these forms. He's the original prototype. I read in, uh, of course, we hear if you go to Vrindavan, there is one place where Krishna and Radharani assume the forms of peacock, and they they dance there in Varsana. There is a place. So, and I found also in Vishnu Dharmotara Purana I was reading. Krishna assumed the form of peacock, but there's not much details given. So then he assumed the form, of course, we heard of Matsya, we heard Varaha, we heard the, you know, there's so many forms. We don't have that information. Why? Because Vyasadev gave us only a limited number of verses. And we know that in higher planets, all the Shastras, there are millions and millions and millions of verses existed, which we don't have access to. Of course, what did we read? You know, just that it's very even that much we cannot cover. That. So there are so many more scriptures describing Krishna's forms and Krishna's pastimes. But the human form, it said, it's the most, of course, Krishna's form. That's the most. That's the original one. Original in the sense, the fullest, the complete manifestation of it. Okay. Then he said he performs his pastimes to show mercy to the devotees. So that's why Krishna does, you know, like here, we are, we are hearing about confidential reasons for the Lord's appearance. He comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So why he comes? To show mercy to his devotees. We already said, right, at the beginning, he's teaching us how to be a devotee. In Bhagavad Gita, of course, he says, Yadaya Dahi Dharma Sevlana in Bhagavad Tadatmanam Sri Jamiham, Paritana Sadhana Minasha Chabushkitam, Dharma Samstapanata, Sambhavam Yuge Yuge. Why he comes? Of course, three reasons. But the main one is to perform certain pastimes with his devotees, to attract his devotees. 
That's the main reason, and that's why he comes. He he performs all these deeds to show the mercy to the devotees. So then, having heard such pastimes, one should engage in service to him. That's the conclusion. <clears throat> why we have to perform service? Why we have to perform service? Hmm? Why we have to perform service? Why we have to perform service? So if you hear about Krishna's pastimes, you may say, that's enough, I've heard. Yes, okay. Okay, that's good. That's very important. Okay, we have to, 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 to gain realizations. That's also very good. To become closer. Yes. Oh, one more thing is missing. One more, yes. Why do we do service? Huh? To develop relationship, that's that's also very important. Just let me hear from the huh? Samarpan. Samarpan means what? Remembrance? No. What does that mean? Surrender. Surrender. Surrender, okay. Yes. That's our nature. That's our nature. <laughs> that's a position. Okay, that's also fine. Because if you don't serve Krishna, then what do you do? You serve the senses, yes, you serve your own senses, you become slave of your senses, if nothing else. Or you serve something else, someone else. <coughs> so better to serve Krishna, no? Better to serve Krishna. And then, of course, said uh, to develop relationship or how do we express our love? We just keep on talking or something? No, we start doing something, no? So that doing something, that expression of love, that exchange, that's the service. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes and he's teaching us how to do that. <coughs> how do you do this? Is it like now, like after we'll have a service of Prasharam, and then somebody goes around, he's serving. He's serving. <coughs> and then he takes the spoon, and he just goes and he just drops like this you know, your plate. <laughs> or maybe like this. Down. <laughs> is, is that the way to serve? Or you know somebody will come and then you know they will you will already eat and then they'll touch your plate with everything like this, make everything Or they will um, do something seven. <coughs> huh? Yo. <laughs> I've got some throat issue. Uh, or, or let's say you have a, you have dal, and then somebody puts something solid, and everything splashes around. You know, is that the way to serve? So simple examples, silly examples, but we have to also know how to serve. Then, when you serve. Then you feel that expression of love, no? Some care, some concern, in some 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 kind of, a <coughs> you know, some some. Uh, you feel the love when somebody serves proper, and you feel when somebody serving you like okay, you know, just have it. How do you feel then? Is that feeling? Is that nice? Mm -hmm. you no, know, is that nice? You, like you. <clears throat> Like in flight or something, somebody, I don't even know, I, I never take now, but you know, they come and they just serve. You know, it's, it's very, let's say like mother serves the child or something. It's, 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 it's all the attention, with all the care, with all the love, you feel the difference, no? So, but then there is an art also how to do this. You have to know the person, you have to know what they like. Or, or sometimes they force you some, to eat some item that you don't like. No, 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 you have it. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's like, it, you don't like it. But they, they think, oh, they've done very nice things, but they just so displease you like anything. They don't know how to serve. So you have to know who knows, who, who likes what also. How to do it and how to present them with what they like. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming, he's teaching us, he's telling us this is what Krishna likes and how he likes to, it to be done. That's bhakti. Otherwise, if you're not concerned to do the way Krishna wants it, but then what is your bhakti? In any relationship, if you're not concerned to please the person and you, 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 
and you want to learn what that person likes, but then where is the question of relationship? You're just doing the way you think it should be done, and then everybody just has to accept it. What does that mean? Is that going to work? Is that going to enhance the relationship? No. You have to know what the person, you know, sometimes how many, I mean, some silly things that when we live together and uh, you try to express, okay, like, so, let's say, I, I'm staying, give a little example, whatever. In front of my door, they keep chairs, you know, when I exit out. And that little hallway, it's always blocked with chairs. And I keep on telling people, you know, please remove the chairs. Once you use them, you remove the chairs. So then somebody who, <clears throat> who would care or something, they would do that. And somebody who wouldn't, they, they wouldn't. They wouldn't do it. You know. <coughs> so then if you want to have a nice relationship, and then those who don't do it, you know, we have some things going on. <laughs> like this. So also in the family life or whatever it is, you know what? It's irritating someone, and you try not to do that for sake of love or for sake of very good relationship. It just, it's just uh, whatever. So many different examples are there. And we find that all the time. You know, sometimes we, we just get upset with whatever somebody else, somebody might be doing. And if it's really upsetting for whatever reason, then we express that and we say, please, you know, can we do something about that? That this can be avoided because it's for whatever reason, it's very disturbing. And then everybody has something like this. So these are very delicate and sensitive things within any, any relationship. So Krishna also, he likes certain things, he doesn't like certain things. He's a person, we are the person, he's the person. So we also have to be very concerned and cautious and careful. And if we have any love, then we'll express that. And then we will do whatever he likes us to do. But if we are not, let's say you're offering Krishna something that it's, I don't know. And like that's um, <coughs> like very um, heavy example. Sometimes you offer Charnamrita and instead of sugar, you put salt. <laughs> you know, or something, you know. That means we really didn't think, you know, when, when we were making Chinamrit or something. Or we burned the preparation. Of course, some people like the burn taste, but it's like, <laughs> it's tough, Thomas. <laughs> it's like, you know, and then you offer it to Krishna. What is, you know, would Krishna be happy? He, he likes it, he doesn't like it. That's definitely not that. You don't hear in Vrindavan anybody burns anything, you know, and offers it to Krishna. Or you mix certain things and, you know, that don't mix. So Krishna likes specific, and it's mentioned, this is why, this is, we have this, we have the Shasta, it's, it's clearly mentioned what Krishna likes, what he doesn't like, and how he likes it to be done. And in which way it should be served, and in which way, which way it should be cooked, and everything, and so many things. This is about, let's say, this is just examples of cooking, but that's in everything, in every kind of interaction, in every kind of dealing, in any kind of relationship. It's a whole science, whole science, of, again, of what Sambanda Videya Prayojana. Knowing about the person, what person likes, what he dislikes, what's your position, what you can make and serve and present from your position, and then how to achieve certain goal, and what is the way to do so. There's a whole science given in the Shastra. That's why there is no such a spiritual science anywhere anywhere how to develop relationship with God and who the God is and how to act upon it. Where do you find it? Nowhere. Nowhere. It's just the God is great. Yeah, fine. But Prabhupada would ask the question, how, how great it is. This is what it's given in our Shastra. There is no details mentioned anywhere else. You know, and how, then how to develop relationship with God. Usually it's only just, yes, just in reverence, very distant. But what we are discussing here, that's what we are saying, this chicken charitamrita, it's so intimate, it's so close. How do you come closer to God? Not having such a great, great distance. Yes, he's great and we are small and insignificant. Yeah, that's okay. But then how do you come closer? Well, you have to get trained. You have to know what he likes and you have to act upon this. That will bring you closer towards him. And then you see how much you can relish, you know, that greatness of him. And how wonderful that is. This is what chicken charitamrita is about.
So we that he comes. He's engaging us. He's teaching us how to do that. That's his incredible mercy. Absolutely no qualification. But he's so merciful, still he is presenting this, this essence of how to bring us closer to him. That's, that's his incredible mercy. And what we said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes how often? We discussed that earlier, how often he comes. We should, we should really understand how rare that is and how extremely fortunate we are to be presented with something as such. How rare that is, huh? We said that. Anybody knows? How often Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to present this knowledge? How often that is? Don't say wrong, you know? Oh, see? Nobody knows. Yes. Yes, correct. You get extra sweet. Once in a Brahma's day. And how long is the Lord Brahma's day? One, yeah. One kalpa. How many chatur yugas? One thousand chatur yugas. Can you calculate how many millions of years that is? Oh, let's say, let's say, let's say four million years times thousand. That's one day of Brahma. So that's that, so once in that period of time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu call, comes because you know the time is cyclical. He comes and presents this philosophy, and that's available now for some few hundred years. Okay, a few thousand, so ten thousand years of the golden age within the age of Kali. And we are here now, and who knows next moment if you leave the body, where we will end up. <laughs> and now we have a chance to be presented with such incredible philosophy. It's inconceivable. It's inconceivable. <clears throat> so this is Yajna Mahaprabhu is coming. He's teaching us how to come closer to Krishna, how to qualify ourselves, purify ourselves, and understand who is Krishna, what he likes, and how to act upon him. So that we are not just, yes, God is great. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. But not, not everyone necessarily has to be satisfied with this. We want to come closer. And the closer you are to the source of your attraction, isn't that more wonderful? Isn't that more greater? Or you're just happy and said it. Let's say you have your some, some I don't know, Bollywood star or something. I don't know if it's, and it's a mundane example. <laughs> it's like, and then is it just enough? Yes, yes, yes. Wouldn't, wouldn't everybody like to come close to them? I mean, in theory, at least. Of course, many times I just hear some people, you know, they come close to them and they just, phew, it's a horrible experience. They don't even, you know, they don't entertain them at all. <clears throat> I just, I just, I just read about one. There was some famous uh, singer, some lady from U.S. Who I forgot the name. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and then some fan came to her and kind of had an opportunity to be close and try to shake hands with her. And she said, "I don't shake hands," and she just left or something. And this guy was like. She was very rude, you know, like very just dismissive, you know, like very, very, he had a very bad experience. So, so much about being a fan of someone, you know. When you come close to Krishna, what Krishna does? Huh? What Krishna does? Krishna embraces you and you melt out of ecstasy, you know? What's this now? I want to make things worse, anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> But thank you. This is an example of service. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm just connecting to what we are discussing. We have to learn how to serve. And you know, we can try our best. Of course, it's not the best. I would think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good attempt. A good attempt. You're progressing. You're progressing. That's okay. <laughs> so this is how Krishna is teaching us how to do, you know. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, okay. Any questions so far? Because we didn't start the purport yet, huh? Yes. Also, once a day of Brahma Krishna also appears, and Rama also comes once a day only. It's very rare. No, they don't come simultaneously, huh? No, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes after Krishna. Yes, always after Krishna. 
sequence is the same, I guess. At least I don't know. In this, this is, this is what it happens in in this in this chapter yuga. Rama came four chapter yugas back, not in the same Teta yuga this time. He came in twenty fourth cycle. Now we are in twenty eighth. Anyway, now you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Uh, is there any unreal Krishna appearing? Before. Yeah. yeah, okay, so the cycles are reversed. Yeah, okay. But there's no original Krishna here. Yeah. Okay, it's only one Krishna. Original is meant Raja Krishna. But whenever he comes as Raja Krishna, he also comes in Mathura, Dvarka, he manifests, or in Kurukshetra, Vasudeva. So it's not that Krishna comes some other time, but he's not the original time. No, he comes only once. So, his lilas will be different. Uh, usually, in, usually, in, we well, whatever we have given, as I said, description in Srimad Bhagavatam, usually the pastimes are the same. There might be some light differences or descriptions given more somewhere else, but more or less it's fixed. More or less it's fixed because. All the pastimes he performs are eternal pastimes. They're eternal pastimes. And they always keep on, they're, they're going on right now. But the, of course, the descriptions we are given are mostly the same for our understanding, for our purification. But there are different descriptions. There are different descriptions also, let's say in Kaliya pastime. Sometimes Krishna dances on the hoods of Kaliya. And in Brihad Bhagavatam, it is described that sometimes Krishna comes and he uh, ties Kaliya, yokes him like a horse, and he drives around the lake. <laughs> he does that with Kaliya. And Kaliya is doing service like this. Or sometimes he does something else he does with other demons. That's in Brihad Bhagavatam, that's another scripture. So some, some other times when Krishna appears, Lila is slightly different. It's not exactly the same, but the same Lila goes on. So there, there are differences. Like we know, Ramayana. There's so many Ramayans. It's not only one. There's Adbhut Ramayana also. There is. <laughs> no, <it's just> like, <laughs> I'm not joking. It's like, <laughs> there's so many different Ramayans. And the stories are more or less the same. Like you see, Jambavan knows them all. Every Kalpa Ramayan happens. And Jambavan lives like a for like Brahma, it's, you know, it's so long he lives. So every time he's part of the same Lila, and he already knows what will happen, more or less. But sometimes the details are different. Sometimes little, you, you can, when you read Ramayana, when they came into that cave and Jamba say, oh, now this is that. And they say, what, what? I said, nothing, nothing. <laughs> he already knows more or less what is going <laughs> But the details are different. There's all something a little different. Some, because everyone is individual, you know, it's like sometimes different things happen. It's not always like it's not like machine or something. It goes on like mechanically. No, it's it's personal. It's some different varieties of it. like that. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Yes. Krishna appears to attract devotees because now we are attracted to what? Like I said, we are attracted to Bollywood. We are attracted to so many nonsense things. No. So that's why Krishna appears to become attracted to him because there's no greater attraction than that. Everything else is. Huh? I didn't hear that first. What? Devotees are already attracted. Not really. You you see. Hey, <laughs> Sumit, you tell that. What was that? Sankarshan Maharaj, he said, was that zero and one? Remember that? Attraction to Krishna and Maya. Remember that? Zero and one? What was that? You were responding very nicely at the time. Come on, I remember. You can have good memory, Yeah, well, you, you don't. Anyway. 
<laughs> I don't have a good memory this time. I'm remembering some. Most of the time, we're attracted to Maya, material energy, distracted most of the time, and then sometimes we're a little bit attracted to Krishna. Like, um... Okay, turning on and off, turning on and off. Most of the time, we're off. We're turned off from Krishna, but we're turned on to Maya. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so it's like, uh, so that's why we need to hear more about Krishna. That's why we come here to to hear more about Krishna, to become more attracted. And say, wow, what does Krishna do? You know, all these some called how they call them now, Marvel heroes and uh, I don't know all this nonsense. Yeah. Whatever, you know, we, we, you know, we need some something going on, and we are attracted to complete uh, fictions. But when we, when we read about Krishna, how wonderful that is. Yeah. We read Marama and we read Mahabharata. Phew, such a wonderful pastime. It has everything. Action, comedy, romance, uh, you know, intrigue, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's far better than any, anything they can do. And of course, it's just special effects. There is, no, there, is no, there is no art of acting anymore. That's lost. You just see all the special effects, you know, computer graphics and stuff what is that <clears throat> so the real thing is when you hear about krishna then you become attracted towards that and that has substance and that purifies our heart yeah free from lust anger greed envy madness illusion then that's the substance of existence not when you watch and are attracted to whatever else and then you become even more contaminated by all of so that's why Krishna appears. He gives us this. He's giving us all the shastas so we can become purified and attracted to Him. We know what means attraction. When why we don't have attraction towards Him. We gave example. What, what's the most common example we give? Why we don't have attraction towards Krishna? What's the most common example? What I usually give as an example. Of course, there are several, but what's the most, let's say, impressive or the most common, most more easy to relate it's like what i just i'm asking for that because i just said a few times just not long ago it's a magnet right which is rusty so there is no attraction to and cannot you know to any iron or other magnet no so what is that rust that's lust mostly in other anarchists so you remove that attraction will be there so if we remove all the anarthas, we'll have attraction to Krishna. Very simple. So through these pastimes, that's why it said, if you hear from appropriate source to Krishna's pastimes with the gopis, your lust is finished. But from appropriate source, if you hear from inappropriate source, then you're in big trouble, then you increase that lust even more so. So one has to be careful. That's a spiritual life. It's like a razor's edge. It has to be properly presented according to Guru Parampara. So it will have, it's like, okay, like, let's say like in medicine, there's some poisons, you use them, you benefit. If you don't know, you finish. Almost to that extent. So one has to know how to use spiritual life. That's why we have to have spiritual master. To guide us and teach us, that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, to guide us and teach us how to do things and get a perfect result. Okay, we'll stop with this. Chat box. Okay. I want to have perfect finishing now in my stuff. <laughs> okay, chat box. It's not open. That's a personal question. It has nothing to do. Yes, I've gone through many other. I've studied so many things. You can ask me in person. Okay. Haribo, Chitni Mahabharu, Kijai, Chitni Chaitanya, Kijai, Shri Prabhupada, Kijai, Gopi, Ramande, Kijai, Gopi.